It's the eighth round of the BCA 2020 Cup. Our coverage on the Nation News Network comes to you again from Daryl's Road. And it's another titanic battle between Group B leaders Wanderers and second place Sajikor Life UEA. Conditions overhead were fine with early morning showers giving way to brilliant sunshine. But the damage had already been done with the outfield at the island's oldest club, Waterlog, from the overnight deluge. UEA coaches Rohan Nurse and Pedro Collings finding out for themselves just how much water has settled on the outfield. The 22 yards between the two creases of the Darrells Road pitch was fine, looking bone hard and ready for another good day of cricket, except the runoff at the southern end, which had become sodden from water that seeped from the covers, and this led to ground manager Adam Brown having to put in extra work to get it right. The work to rehabilitate that end of the pitch also included Brown supervising the burning off of the excess moisture in the hope of a delayed start to play. Umpires Vincent Bulling and Amal Reed joined one of their two inspections of the outfield and also had their hands full supervising some of the remedial work. The players found things to do to keep them occupied with this group of UB players, including Barbados Pride batsman Lenico Boucher getting a game of dominoes going and coach and nurse talking shop with Barbados Pride wicketkeeper batsman Tevin Walcott about ways he can improve his game. After a second inspection of the ground, umpires Bulling and Reed met with the hierarchy of both teams and eventually all concerned decided it was in everyone's best interest to abandon any hopes of play for the day. Disappointment then for the two teams and the dozens that had turned up to watch this crucial match. Let's hear from the two coaches, first Ricky Clark of Wanderers and then Pedro Collings of UEA. Uh, disappointing day for you as a coach, um, you're the leaders, you're hoping to maybe come here in this top of the group clash and against the UEA and probably um, hoping for another victory to you know, guarantee yourself first place in the group. How disappointing did you get in the play today? Yeah, well, obviously having not um, been able to get any uh, game in today is a little bit disappointing. Um, we had really looked at this game as a good gauge as to where we are in terms of competition. Uh, we do respect the quality of the UV setup and um, for us um, it's a slightly disappointing situation uh, in terms of not being able to have a chance to play. Warners have been doing pretty well in the uh, white ball cricket in recent times. I won their champions a couple of years back. You now you're leading this group, looking to make it into the quarterfinals and probably want to win the tournament. Um, what's been responsible for that? Well, we've been able to um, put in quite a lot of work here at Wonders. Um, uh, our facility does allow us to, to do a little bit more than some clubs. Um, we do have uh, opportunity, like, other, like some other facilities where on evenings we can actually split our, our, our senior team and our junior or development teams and we can then identify certain scenarios and rules to which we can work at and we can have a uh, I would say a little bit more um, direct type of, um, of, of um, training and preparation towards our goals. Um, every cricket um, format is different and so the preparation um, is, that is required is certainly different. Uh, we've been able to have um, what I would describe as a um, lot more pointed um, preparation for this T20 in that that has been all it. Um, we've been able to, to put together for this year. In the past, um, when the T20 and the 50 over and the three day um, comes into play, um, it does create some challenges in terms of identifying how we set up our sessions. Uh, generally, what we've been able to have here is um, a pretty enthusiastic bunch of guys, so our practice sessions are always well attended. So it allows me to be able to prepare a lot better in terms of um, certain areas to which I want to set myself up for the, for, for the, good, for the guys. How would you rate this season um, so far? As I said, you've been, you've been doing pretty well at the top of the group. How would you rate the performance of the team this year? Well, the guys have um, stuck to their roles. Uh, we've been lucky that um, we've been, as I said, we've done a lot of work off the field in terms of identifying our roles. 
Um, we've uh, recently been boosted with the inclusion of uh, Raymond Rifa and Kirk Harris. They've come into to the team to boost our team. But in general, uh, most of where we are, we didn't get there because of those guys. Uh, other guys that have come to the front um, are all, all part and parcel of the setup here at Wonders. How do you see the remainder of the tournament going for you? Well, we can't, we can't really um, um, uh, try to predict what is happening. Um, like everything else, we take it one game at a time. And um, once we um, can prepare ourselves uh, as best as we can for each game, um, our guys have been focused and um, identifying their roles. They've been able to execute. And once our guys start to execute and, and put together their roles and remain focused, we'll do well. A bit of a setback here for you guys today and not being able to play. Um, how much, of, how, how disappointed are you that you weren't able to get some cricket play? Yeah, well, um, you know, a bit disappointed because of the hard work we've been putting in through the week, you know, during the week and stuff. You know, guys looking forward to playing on Saturday, but, um, you know, we can't control the weather. And, um, and I guess it's for the best of, you know, interest of the boys. You don't want fellas to go on this wet turf and, and get injured either. Um, we still got another game against Maple to look forward to, and hopefully uh, we can get some good weather there and come out on top. Um, you guys are still, though, in, in the frame to reach the quarterfinals, so I'm sure, and even though you've got the wash the, the out here today, you, you're you still in the quarterfinals, so I'm sure that you are pleased with the way the boys have uh, played throughout the season. Yeah, the guys have been playing um, very um, positive cricket, you know, the UV brand is a, is a positive brand, a brand that, um, you know, you just want to be a step ahead um, every time you take the field, you know, guys to follow. And um, it's been exciting, um, you know, Carl Carbon, he was on the verge of getting, you know, his third century on the truck, but unfortunately he will have to wait till, <laughs> till the next game. Um, but all the guys have been performing well, you know, have some young, talented, fast bowlers, um, young Marcus, Kelvin Marcus, he's been exceptional. And um, I think that, you know, he has a big future ahead of him. He's, been, he's re really hard, his work ethic is really high, and I'm looking forward to seeing him, you know, representing Barbados one day. Um, you were you got back a couple of uh, your your your, your, your in, international players in in, um, in Jonathan Carter, Nicholas Curtis, who is going to come into this game as so too, and Nico Boucher. Um, how how do you see the, the remainder of the tournament going as you as, as you've now got those guys available? Yeah, well, um, these guys came in and they played against um, St. Catherine. Unfortunately, we only lost uh, one wicket, I think, up there, and a lot of them get a chance to get a bat. But um, they've been training hard, you know, they go to the BCA training and come to UE after, putting a lot of work. So, you know, I'm just excited to, to, to get in the game and watch them perform, you know, do their thing. Um, you know, Carter, um, Curtin, Boucher, all those guys with this um, CPL experience, you know, for guys to feed off them. Um, it's good to have them back in the squad, you know, to help strengthen the team. You, the former Barrett Vedas and West Indies Pacer, um, you know, turn into, you've now turned to coach. How have you been enjoying that experience working with these young guys? Yeah, I've been enjoying it. Um, I've been drinking more water now than I used to drink lately. <laughs> but um, I've been, you know, it's a challenge and I've been enjoying it. Um, I have Rohan and Errol, you know, they support me very well. And, you know, during the days, it's long days, but. Yeah, we get a lot of our training sessions and, um, you know, the guy's been doing well. So disappointment there for the top two teams in Group B, Wanderers and Sajikor Life UEA. But they won't let that trouble their souls, considering that there was no play in the other matches involving the top teams in the group. At Lowlands between Lords and third place Bayview Hospital YMPC. And at Bayfield between Crane Resort St. Catherine and Old Foe and fourth place Spartan. The Parkites will rest easier too because Isolation Cavaliers, who are breathing down their necks, were beaten by Sajikor Life UEB in the only match that was played in the group. It also sets up a showdown between the two of them next Saturday at KMV Oval to confirm which side will grab the last quarterfinal spot. Over to Group A, where far more play was possible but none between the top two teams, Wilde and Gladiola at Rice's. An important result at Bank Hall where Empire enhanced their chances of reaching the final eight when they staged a dramatic heist against defending champions Carlton in a low-scoring contest. West Indies left-arm spinner Jomel Warikan, the star there. He sealed a nail-biting eight-run victory, taking the last three Carlton wickets in the final over as the defending champions failed to chase a measly 77 in a match reduced to 16 overs a side. Fellow Barbados Pride spinner Kamari Boyce had earlier taken three for eight to undermine the Carlton top order. Other winners on the day were IGS Insurance Brokers Yorkshire and BDFSP 
over the two Barbados youth teams. Before we take a look at the standings, let's give you the result of the rescheduled Group A match between the two Barbados youth teams played last Sunday at Kensal Noble. Youth A kept themselves in the frame for the quarterfinals with a 26-run win over Youth B. The result highlighted by good batting on both sides, led by Shakir Paris for the Youth A and Rashawn Worrell for Youth B. But it was a four-wicket haul for Kevin Wickham that made the difference between the two sides. To the standings now, where that win for Empire greatly enhances their chances of making the quarterfinals, moving them into a three-way tie on 18 points with Barbados Youth A and the Soldiers. Wilde, Gladiola and Carrollton have all confirmed their places in the quarters, but the outcomes of their matches next Saturday will obviously determine the final placings. In Group B, a similar story. Wanderers, UEA and YMPC have all confirmed their places in the final eight, and will be looking forward to the final round of group matches to determine their final placings. Spartan on 20 points and Isolation Cavaliers, two points behind them, are vying for the final spot from Group B, and the outcome of their battle against each other next Saturday will determine which of the two will advance to the quarterfinals. The next Saturday's fixtures, defending champions Carlton play group leaders Wilde at Desmond Haynes Oval in the headline contest in Group A, but the real important matches are at Bank Hall, where Empire are heavily favoured and will host strugglers ESA Field Pitwick, and at Kensington Oval, where Barbados Youth A will have to play out of their skins to beat Gladiola. Both Empire and Barbados Youth A need to win to confirm their place in the quarterfinals. Victory for one and defeat or no result for the other will give the winning team a place in the quarterfinals. Another scenario, victory or defeat or no result for both will send the organizers scrambling to the tiebreaker rules which currently favor the youth team on all counts. The red headline contest in Group B will be at KMV Oval where Isolation Cavaliers and Spartan will hold their fates in their own hands. Whichever side wins advances to the quarterfinals but a no result puts everything in favor of the Parkites. Play in all matches starts at half past one. So take your pick of any of the matches, grab your folding chair and a picnic basket and come out to the final day of group play in the BCA T20 Cup. And remember to buy your copy of the Sunday Sun for reports and scores on all of the BCA T20 Cup matches and continue to follow the progress of the competition on our website, nationnews.com and all Nation News social media channels. I'm Adriel Richard.